All right, good evening and welcome to the educational portion of tonight's edition of the D-Star Radio Scanning Net. Welcome to edition 42, June 12, 2011 of the D-Star Radio Scanning Net. So tonight's net topic that we're going to talk about specifically is amateur radio. Why you should get your amateur radio license why you should upgrade your amateur radio license, and why you should uh, take place um, uh, and, and involve yourself in invest in D-Star Digital Radio. So tonight's a little bit about amateur radio, and it's a great topic. Let me tell you about how I first got started in amateur radio. Let me give you some good web links, and let me tell you what we're going to be talking about next week, and let's see if we can't get you more motivated to increase your license class and have you be a part of the D-Star um, hobby that, that we all love. You know, it was 11 years ago that I decided to get my amateur radio license. And in brief, I was a part of a local scanner club here in Orlando, Florida, called the Central Florida Listeners Group. And uh, we had a really big scanner club, you know, back in the, in the mid to late 90s. I think I started with uh, started with a club probably in like 95, and it was around 99 that I realized that I was the only part of the club, meaning the only member of the club that did not have their amateur radio license. And I'm like... You know, what's up with all these guys getting their ham radio license? Because, you know, it really wasn't for me. I'm like, I don't have any interest in this. You know, but the more they started to mentor me and show me the benefits, I realized why I wanted to get my license. Well, the first thing was, I live in the state of Florida, and we have very, very strict Florida state statutes here that say that in order to transport your scanner in an automobile, you need to have your amateur radio license. And because of that, you're exempt from that ruling which means that you can transport your scanner in, uh, in your car with you. And uh, that alone was the primary reason that I got my license, but I did not realize all the opportunities that it would bring with it over the years. So I went to my local store here in Orlando, Florida, called Amateur Electronics Supply. We have an AES, which is a big ham radio store here in Orlando, and, uh, and tested and got my... Uh, my technician license. Now, back then, the laws by the Federal Communications Commission that govern amateur radio are very different than they are today in the fact that we had different license classes. Back then, we had tech, tech plus, general, advanced, and extra. Back then, you had to learn Morse code. Today, you don't. Today, it's a breeze. Forget Morse code. Seriously, it, okay. Let me just say for the record, okay, I respect Morse code. I learned Morse code. I don't like it, but I respect it. Okay? I, I saw the value of Morse code many, many years ago, and I see the value of Morse code today in HF communications. But you having to learn it to get your license is no longer necessary. So let's just dissolve that myth right there that, you know, that in order to get your, your ham license today or upgrade your class of license, you no longer need Morse code. So that's first and foremost. Let me let it reset. And WX480X, or the D-Star Radio Scanning Net. Now, to get your technician license and actually get into the hobby, it's really, really simple. Uh, perhaps you had an amateur radio license several years ago, and you let it expire. And say, based on that hypothesis, uh, you do want to get your license. <clears throat> it's certainly not hard. One of the light, youngest hams in the United States, I believe, based on my research this week, is six years old. So if you're smarter than a six-year-old child, which I believe you are, you shouldn't have any problem getting uh, your license at all. Now, a couple great resources that you can look at as you start to research the hobby are, one is the American Radio Relay League, ARRL.net. That's www.arrl.net. That's our national organization uh, for amateur radio, known as the American Radio Relay League. Now, in addition to that, if you want to test and or you want to upgrade your license, uh, my primary recommendation of a testing service to use, and this is who I've done my testing from, is a group called W5YI. That's Whiskey 5 Yankee India. 
Their website is as follows. It's www.w5yi.com. That's www.w5yi.com. And it's a place where it says, uh, you can see on the tagline, Amateur Radio, a natural resource, ham it up. And uh, you can contact Pete. It's Pete at W5YI.com. You'll see that, and you'll have the ability to have a specialized testing session catered just for you. Now, in addition to amateur radio, W5YI offers a whole line of commercial licenses. So while you're studying for your amateur radio license, why not use that knowledge and get uh, a commercial license as well? Uh, I did the same thing for a licensure called the General Radio Telephone Operator Licensure, or G-R-O-L, or GROL, General Radio Telephone Operator's License, I needed to have for work several years, because I worked for a company, Motorola, and one of the things that we did as a Motorola dealer was we actually certified police radar and police laser guns. And I have a lot of expertise in this area. I sold and uh, trained law enforcement on police radar and laser. Uh, it's an expertise of mine. But one of the things I wanted to do was have the ability to calibrate that equipment as well, so I used the W5YI group in conjunction for commercial testing. So these are two good resources, certainly, to get it started. Let me let it reset. Now, given the fact that you have your license and you want to move forward in the hobby, well, what are different resources that you can look at? And let me go ahead and give you two that relate to uh, specifically to DSTAR. If you use your Google search engine and go to www.google.com, and by the way, here's some statistics as of this week. Do you know that about 98.4% of the citizens within the United States of America all use Google as a search engine? Over 98% of us. So if you hear me make reference to Google, it's not that I don't like Yahoo or I don't like Bing, but just understand that we all use Yahoo. Uh, we just all seem to, uh, you know, to have liked it over the years. But in current days, what we actually use now is the Google search engine at www.google.com. So if you do go there and you choose um, uh, this specific link uh, off your search bar at www.w5yi.com, First of all, I want to have you notate that, but the second thing is within that search parameter, getting back to Google, um, you can type the word DSTAR, D-S-T-A-R. Now, when you type the word DSTAR, D-S-T-A-R, into the Google search engine, you will see the um, Wikipedia for DSTAR, which talks about digital smart technologies for amateur radio, or DSTAR. Uh, that's what it stands for. A lot of people did not know that it stands for Digital Smart Technologies for Amateur Radio. That is DSTAR. The second one is www.dstarinfo.com. That's www.dstarinfo.com. And then the third, uh, of course, and one that I like a great deal, is dstarusers.org. And that's www.dstarusers.org. Dot .org. Now, when you go to that website, dstarusers.org, um, you will specifically um, learn more about uh, everything that is DSTAR, and it's one that I certainly uh, uh, love using. And uh, it's just a great way to uh, learn about who's on DSTAR and what's happening um, at any point in time. And uh, now, going back to dstarinfo.com, now, the great thing about dstarinfo.com is this, and that is if you go to www.dstarinfo.com, dstarinfo.com, on the top center legend between applications and reflectors, you will see nets, and that are nets related to dstar. If you scroll all the way down at the bottom of the DSRS. DSTAR Radio Scanning Net Sunday at 21...